on this video, we're going to look at the 7400 integrated circuit. So there's the 7400 series. This is the uh, first one, 00. I'm using the HC version. There's also LS that is common, and there's other versions. So those letters go where uh, those two X's are. Now, it's a quad two input NAND gate. So I did a couple videos using the NAND gate with the switches and with the transistors. This one's uh, more efficient, a lot better option. We have to uh, power it. We'll look at that coming up. But there's the schematic symbol, and we have right here the truth table. So what the NAND gate does is, unlike the AND gate, where you need all the inputs high for the output to be high, the NAND gate, the output is inverted. You can see the little dot there. There's the AND gate uh, schematic symbol for the AND logic gate, and uh, there's a little dot to indicate the output's inverted. So, when uh, any of the inputs are low, the output's high. If they're all high, all the inputs, then the output will be low. So it's the opposite of an AND gate. So I have it here. Now you'll notice that we do have the supply pins. So VCC and ground are wired like that. I have these other jumpers which look kind of pointless, but you don't want to leave the inputs floating. So you got wasted current going through the integrated circuit and stuff like that. So you can either put it directly to the negative rail, directly to the positive rail. That works just fine, prevents it from floating. The only NAND gate we're going to use in this video is down here. And there's a number of ways you can give them uh, signals, but uh, for this video, I'm just going to uh, use jumpers. So. Again, to the inputs, we can go directly to the uh, positive rail or the negative rail. And so we got the output there. There's one input, there's the other one. We'll plug that there. And this one right here. So I'm gonna start with uh, both of them given a low signal right there, negative rail. So we're gonna grab a 220 ohm resistor and put that to the output and then uh, an LED so that we can see when the output is high or low. So right now both inputs are to the negative rail and we have two low inputs, a high output. So it's as close to five volts as it will get. Now we, uh, we saw enough of that. We're gonna look at the power supply. So you can see while the LED is on, of course, there's current flowing right there. Now this jumper, I'm going to go to the positive rail, and there you can see the output did not change. It stayed high. So we gave one high, one low, and again, we can do it on this side. doesn't matter. One high, one low, and the output stays high. So now we're going to go to our first, uh, fourth situation. So right now, one input's floating. That's why the uh, LED wants to high, wants to floating. If this were uh, to uh, the uh, negative rail, to low, now it's fully on because we got at least one low. But right now, this is floating. It's kind of acting like an antenna. It's getting high and low signals really rapidly. But if I put them both to the uh, positive rail, right now you can see the LED is off. And I didn't show it in the transistor version, but with the switch version, I showed if you make a NAND gate yourself just with a few components, you have even more current going when the output is low or off than uh, when it was on because we just went directly to ground and avoided the uh, load with those versions. With the integrated circuit, we're saving a lot more energy right now. It's just not letting any current flow anywhere at the moment. So hopefully that makes sense. The integrated circuit, especially for this logic gate, a whole lot better than what you'll build on your own. You might as well use one of these. So. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Check out my links in the description. That would help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.